Imagine a scale that would gauge the advancement of civilizations on a cosmic level, from mere planetary inhabitants like us to cosmic deities harnessing the energy of entire galaxies. As such a scale is possible, and it does exist, and it's known as the Kardashev scale. Welcome back everyone to the channel. It's me Aditya and today we'll be taking a deep dive into this interesting and intriguing topic known as the Kardashev scale. Now, this ingenious concept developed by the Russian astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev provides a framework for understanding and categorizing the technological advancements of civilizations beyond our own. In this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the Kardashev scale its origins, categories, and implications for our own civilization. So, keep going. So, the Kardashev scale, named after its creator, was coined in 1964 as a result of growing interest towards extraterrestrial intelligence. Kardashev pondered on how to classify and quantify the energy consumption of advanced civilizations. He realized that a civilization's ability to harness energy was a key determinant of its progress and expansion into the cosmos. The Kardashev scale became a powerful tool in order to contemplate the level of civilizations in a universe brimming with stars and galaxies. It provided a way to compare and contrast the abilities of different societies of different universal societies on our major scale and grand scale. The Kardashev scale actually depends on three major parameters. The first is energy consumption, the second is technological advancements, and the third is the interstellar transmission of information. So we will be discussing just a bit about all these parameters and how it impacts on the whole scaling system. So first comes the energy consumption. The primary indicator of our civilization's advancement is its energy consumption. Kardashev proposed that a Tatman civilization has control over all the energy sources on its own home planet. Tatman civilization, on the other hand, has control over the energy of its own star, the sun, that is in our case. An attack three civilization, well, well that has control over the energy of its entire galaxy. Second comes the technological advancement. The scale also considers the technological achievements of a civilization. Because as a society progresses along the Kardashev scale, its level of technological achievements and advancement should also increase, thereby increasing the production of energy. Thus, it's kind of a loop. The more energy it is, the more advanced civilization is. Third comes the interstellar transmission of information. It's basically a civilization's ability to transfer and communicate knowledge through long distances, through long interstellar distances, to other civilizations present in the universe. Advanced civilizations would have the technology to transfer their knowledge, their culture, through long distances to different stars and maybe make base camps there, maybe spread their own race to different planets. Now comes the important part, the categories described by the Kardashev scale. So we'll be talking about five to six categories here. The original Kardashev scale only talks about three, but after some modifications along the time, we have came up with around five to seven kind of civilizations that could exist, and we'll be taking a brief dive to all of this. So first comes the type zero category, that is subglobal. So these are kind of civilizations that have not yet traced type one, and they are still in the early stages of harnessing their planetary energy. Now a type one civilization has the ability to harness and control over all the energy sources on its home planet. This includes mastery over renewable energy, climate sources, and a global society, a global leadership. Currently, talking about Earth, we are considered to be around 0.70 on the Kardashev scale, and we are still trying to become a type 1 civilization. Type 2 civilization can capture and harness the energy of its entire star. And this could be done with supermassive 
well fictional objects known as stars and steel who could actually get energy from the star itself. So the highest tier, the type 3 civilization has the ability to capture and harness energy from an entire galaxy. They could move stars, manipulate galactic structures and harness energy from black holes. Achieving this level of civilization status is incomprehensible for us right now. It's not even in our reach not even in the reach of your thoughts okay it's almost impossible now comes the extended version of the scale next comes the type 4 civilization so this level of civilization can actually harness energy from the whole universe now such civilizations could manipulate space-time itself transcending the laws of physics as we know them next comes the type 5 civilization yes it's still there Type 5 civilization. So if we were talking about universe in the type 4, what should we be talking about now? Yeah, you're right. Multiverse. So the concept of a type 5 civilization contemplates about societies that could actually harness energy from multiple universes within the multiverse. Their powers would be almost godlike. The ones we know as gods, maybe they came from a type 5 civilization. Who knows? And it's almost incomprehensible, just not possible for us to imagine what that could even be. Okay, so the peak, the peak here, the goat here, the goat of our list is Omega, Type 6 Omega Civilizations. At the pinnacle of the scale, the Omega Civilization would have a dominion over an entire universe, that is, a collection of all possible universes and reality. This level of cosmic mastery is purely theoretical and is no way, no way to prove that it could even be possible. So what's the current status of our humanity, of us mankind? Let's talk about it. As I said previously, if we are around 0 0.7 on this cultural scale, so we are on our way to try to become try to reach the type 1 civilization with a growth reliance on renewable energy sources, technological advancements and global interconnectivity, a science that we are heading in the right direction. It may take a decade, it may take a millennia, who knows, but we will reach that destination. Then we will have to start again for the next tier, that is type 2 civilization. And finally, we'll talk about the criticisms of the cultural scale. So while the cultural scale offers a compelling infrastructure blueprint to actually try to understand what our ancient or our alien civilization may look like, we have no proof for it. It's completely theoretical, completely imaginary, and completely made up. We don't know if it could even work when we do make contact with extraterrestrial races. Others also contend that this scale assumes that these civilizations would follow a linear path of energy consumption and that assumption in itself would be wrong. And the most important factor here is we haven't made contact with any extraterrestrial races, any species right now. So we are just us. We don't have a sample space to get a probability check. We don't have a sample test object, right? So we can't prove if it's even possible. Finally, in conclusion, one thing that I can say about this is it's interesting. The first time I read about it, it really blew my mind. It was way too interesting. I mean, this guy just provided a whole infrastructure, a whole blueprint on how to measure these civilizations in 1964, when we were just starting our space exploration in our galaxy, that's a big deal. Please consider that came on in 1964, it is a big deal in my opinion. It makes us curious to actually go and find some extraterrestrial race and to try to prove if it even works. And while it may not be true, but we should strive to become at least a type of civilization. Because we don't know the first time that we make contact with extraterrestrial races if they will be hostile or welcome. See you next time.